on the fabulous Thursday, June 23rd of the year 2022. Mr. Clerk, will you please call the roll? Commissioner Cavell. Here. Commissioner Charles. Thank you. I had him at three minutes. Present. Commissioner Charles. Present. Commissioner Gershenson. Commissioner Gingell. Commissioner Hoffman. Commissioner Hoffman. Commissioner Jackson. Here. Commissioner Jackson. Here. Commissioner Joliet. Here. Commissioner Kogendurfer. Here. Commissioner Kowal. Here. Commissioner Kuhn. Here. Commissioner Long. Here. Commissioner Lubes. Here. Commissioner Markham. <laughs> Commissioner McGillivray. Here. Commissioner Miller. Here. Commissioner Moss. Commissioner Nelson. Here. Commissioner Powell. Commissioner Spiz. Commissioner Wiper. <laughs> Commissioner Woodward. Here. Mr. Chair, you have uh, 20 present. You have a quorum. All right. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Just make an announcement. Uh, Commissioners uh, uh, Markham and Wipert um, will be join us uh, shortly. They are at a SEMCOG meeting representing Oakland County. Um, and it's a pretty big meeting today, and so they'll be here uh, momentarily. Uh, next up, I'll call on the Honorable Commissioner Eileen Kowal to give the invocation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. If you'd please bow your head and pray with me. God of wisdom, we seek your help today. Come and let your wisdom fall upon us, O Lord, as we gather for this meeting. Give us clarity so that we can effectively tackle each part of today's agenda. Reveal problem areas and show us the best solutions that will apply. Point our eyes to every positive outcome since our last meeting and let these favorable results and developments encourage every heart in this room. Dear God, help us apply your wisdom as we decide on certain matters and make plans. And I'd like to also add that if, God, if you can look over the people of uh, Holly Township who suffer, suffered a tremendous uh, hit to their community, to the very heart of their community with the fire this week, that you look over them and help give them encouragement and comfort as they go on restoring their community. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, this will move us to approval of the minutes from the June 7th meeting. Motion by Commissioner Gingell, seconded by Commissioner Nelson. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Let the record reflect that um, the um, uh, minutes are adopted unanimously. Um, next, we move to approval of the agenda. Moved by Commissioner Nelson, seconded by Commissioner Joliet. Um, Commissioner Long. Um, yes, uh, Chairman, thank you. Um, could we please remove 9E from the consent agenda and put it on the regular agenda? We'll move 9E um, to the, um, from the consent agenda to the regular agenda without objection. And staff will make that adjustment and we'll, we will refresh in just a moment. All right, thank Any you. Any other adjustments to the agenda? See none. Um, uh, all in favor of approving the agenda as uh, suggested, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Let the record reflect that the agenda is approved unanimously. This moves us to communications. And um, the first, um, the, I don't know, Commissioner uh, McGilvery, do you want to rec um, recognize our first guest, the, the presentation? Mm -hmm. I'll do it from here. Okay. Um, I'd like to introduce an incredible lady who does so much for Oakland County Parks. She's a historian, she's just amazing. Uh, now granted, I'm a little bit into history, so I enjoy all this stuff, but she's fantastic. So with that, I'll introduce Carol Egbo.
Well, thank you for letting me spend a few minutes with you today from Oakland County Parks. Let me begin by saying, reminding you, we have 14 parks in Oakland County. All of them are amazing in terms of natural beauty. Scenes like this and this. If you haven't been to a park this summer, you absolutely have to go. But I'm not here to talk about the natural beauty tonight. What I want to talk about is the history in our parks. I have a different focus as a historian. When I look at a parkland, I'm wondering who used to live on the land? What are the connections to the land that people have? And let me tell you, in my work as a historian, Oakland County Parks are jam-packed with history. Let me show you an example. Looks like a pile of rocks, right? No, 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 this is a very important pile of rocks. This is located on the Spring Lake Trail in Independence Oaks. But what it was, it was the foundation, the pieces of the foundation that are left of the Bellitz Homestead. This is a family that came from Prussia in 1860 to Oakland County and would settle on land that would become part of Independence Oaks. You see there Rachel Bellitz. When her husband passed away, for several years, she kept the farm going with her children. And here, this kind of ugly piece of concrete is very dear to my heart because in this area, you can see it's located near our parking lot on Fish Lake Road at Rose Oaks County Park. But if I go back in time, you will see that it's actually the foundation of one of the tiny barns of William Fillingham who came from England in 1860 to settle in Oakland County. So that's a piece of history. I always tell my park crew, don't mess with my concrete out there. Just leave it there. Rusty old fence posts, oh, I differ about that. They may look like that to you, but they're located right here along the campground road at Addison Oaks County Park. They're the last visible evidence of this homestead the homestead of Peter and Sarah Shoemaker, who would come to Addison Township in Oakland County in 1840 and remain there with their family for many, many years. Now, if you've been to Addison Oaks, you know there's something bigger out there, historical, than the fence posts. This is the beautiful Buell Mansion. The Buell Mansion was built in 1927 by Lawrence and Cora Peck Buell. That Buell building downtown, that's the Buell family. But before that, I learned that it was the, the Snyder, Abram and Mary Ann Snyder, it was their farm. They called it Maple Leaf Farm. It's a beautiful farm, had many, many outbuildings. But before that, it was the Dennis Snyder homestead. He had come in 1834, one of the first people in Addison Township, built a log cabin and then a little frame house. And he would be part of the history of Addison Oaks. But before that, I learned that there's a significant indigenous presence on the land out at Addison. For example, here's our park. These are two Native American trails that come through the sections of the park. And right here, a quarter of a mile from where our park is located was a significant indigenous settlement that was there for years. And Peter Shoemaker, remember the one who homesteaded? In the family records, he had a box of projectile points that he found every time he plowed in the springtime. All of this reminders of the rich indigenous history that's part of Oakland County. So imagine, you're camping at Addison Oaks County Park. Wouldn't it be cool to know all that history? The history of the land that you're camping on. What I've learned is that history enriches the experience people have in a park. And Oakland County is very committed to that within our park system. But let's say instead you decide to camp at Groveland Oaks, our other campground. What about history there? Well, at one time, Groveland Oaks was called Paradise Beach. It was a recreationary started by Dr. Lamar Matthews. He was an eye doctor in, in, in uh, Pontiac and decided he wanted to build a recreation area out on Dixie Highway. He eventually called it Groveland on the Dixie. It had camping and golfing and swimming, and then he had its own little private zoo. It had monkeys and peacocks, a big pig I found named Excelsior, and then he imported bullfrogs from Arkansas, the biggest bullfrogs he could find, and they became part of his little zoo. 
Well, eventually, Groveland on the Dixie would become Groveland Oaks County Park. And now we have that park to enjoy. I do tell campers out there, keep your eyes open for giant bullfrogs, because there's likely to be descendants of those bullfrogs still in that area. But maybe you want to take a quiet little kayak trip, maybe along one of our waterways. This happens to be Crooked Lake uh, out in Independence. Here's what you want to think about. Likely, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, there were indigenous people that were moving along that same waterway. Why, particularly with Independence Oaks? Independence is the headwaters of the Clinton River. That was the most significant water highway for indigenous people within Oakland County. And something else really amazing. This plant grows in Independence Oaks. Anybody know what that is? That's wild rice. We also have it amazingly at Rose Oaks. These are the only two instances of wild rice still existing in southern Michigan. And why is that important? Because the Anishinaabek, who were the predominant indigenous people within Oakland County boundaries, they called it Manumen. And it was one of the most important cultural and spiritual elements within their culture. So the fact that we still have that there is a reminder that any Oakland County Parks history must start with indigenous people. And we're working hard to learn more about that. So let's say kayaking isn't for you. So you're going to take a swim at Waterford Oaks, at, at one of our water pools. If you were to do that, you would be on the land of Oliver and Marianne Williams. They were some of the first white homesteaders in Oakland County. They would come out the Saginaw Trail from Detroit. They would clear the land, use their two oxen to clear a small piece to plant wheat, and then they would build a 50 by 20 large log structure that wasn't just their house, but a trading post out on the shores of Silver Lake. Maybe you're in, up for a hike. If you were to go to Highland Oaks on this trail, you would be on the land of Jacob Van Valkenburg. Anybody heard of Jacob Van Valkenburg? He was a lawyer. He was someone who was one of the framers of both the 1850 and 1867 Gosh. Michigan constitutions. On top of that, he was a longtime Oakland County probate judge. But he started there on a farm. Maybe you'll choose this trail. This trail, if you choose this one, you're on the farm of John Essler. Here's my favorite photo of John Essler. This is him coming home. This is Fish Lake Road. Um, it, it now, it's still gravel, by the way. But his farm and homestead was right along that trail. In fact, if you go up the trail on the hill and you look to the right, you got to really search. There's a little piece of foundation left from one of his buildings. And Catalpa Oaks. Let's say you spend the day at Catalpa Oaks. Well, here's what I want you to think about. There's an amazing story with Catalpa. If I take, this is an 1857 map, and if I overlay our park, Catalpa Oaks, what I learned was the Taylor family and the McClellan family were the first farmers to, to, to farm that land that would become our park. They belong to a church here, the Presbyterian Reformed Church as did these other farming fam families in Southfield Township. This was a group of abolitionists. They were so intent on doing something about slavery that they got involved in the Underground Railroad. They were actively assisting freedom seekers coming, trying to get to Detroit to cross over into Canada. Amazing stories with this one. This particular area is one of the only fully documented Underground Railroad sites in all of Oakland County. So when you're at Catalpa, you want to think about the fact that long before, there were people so intent on doing something that they broke the law. It was totally illegal to help freedom seekers, but they were so intent to do something, they got actively involved. Which brings me to another one of my favorite stories. Here's Holly Oaks Off-Road Vehicle Park. Right across Dixie is Groveland Oaks. And huddled between them is a little tiny historic cemetery. It's called Hadley Cemetery. And while I was working with their cemetery association on their old records, I learned about Henry Jenkins. Henry Jenkins is buried in an unmarked grave 
at the front of the cemetery. I learned that Henry Jenkins had been born enslaved on the, uh, the, Jenkins, uh, the Jenkins plantation in Wilcox County, Alabama. And somehow, by 1870, he had made his way to Oakland County. Now, had he used the Underground Railroad and come before the Civil War, or had he waited until he was finally free? I don't know. I'm still working on Henry Jenkins' story. I'm not sure. But what I do know is he ended up working on the farm of George Leland in Groveland Township. And he would be there in 1870. Sadly, he would die in 1877. And I don't know what happened to him yet. But he'll be buried right here in Little Hadley Cemetery. So Henry Jenkins' story is part of the history of two of our parks right in that area. And while I'm talking about Holly Oaks, you know that Holly Oaks is a gravel pit. It's now a very popular off-road vehicle park. But here's what it looks like today. But not that long ago, it was farmland. It was the farm of the Holdridge Farm, the Lindsay's, the Living Lettingtons, and the Felshaws. And they had farmland. And one thing they all had in common, they complained about the rocks out there. The rocks and the stones. But what would happen? It would become an economic boom. Because people would realize we can, we can mine this stuff. And it would become one of the largest gravel operations in the entire United States. And then when one of those mines was all mined out, Oakland County took it and turned it into an off-road vehicle park. Highly popular now. What about your dog? My Basset Hounds love this park. But here's something amazing. When you're there, you are where a town has disappeared. It's not even a ghost town, because there's nothing left. There was once a town there called Cole. It was along the Pontiac, Oxford, and Northern Railroad. And at one time, it had a blacksmith shop, a general <coughs> store, and a depot. But when the train times ended, the town ended, and now there's literally nothing left. But that's not the only disappearing town near a park. Right out here at Lion Oaks County Park, there was a little town called Hickville. Hickville was right here along Grand River Road. Now, Grand River Road, just like Dixie Highway, had once been a Native American trail. But by the 1830s, there were stagecoaches moving along the Grand River Road. And Little Hickville was a stagecoach stop. It had a hotel and it had a post office, both run, by the way, by Daniel Hickok, which is why it was Hickville. But over time, it would disappear. But imagine you're golfing at Lion Oaks. Close your eyes and imagine a stagecoach rumbling by to the south of the park because it was right on a stagecoach route. What about if you're golfing at White, Oaks, uh, White Lake Oaks instead? Well, if you park in this parking lot, like most golfers do, you are parking on the Van Teen Farm. This was the Albert Van Teen Farm. Their house was essentially where the parking lot is. And out, while you're out there golfing, well, think about Albert Van Teen. That's where he had been planting potatoes and corn before it became a golf course. And then Springfield Oaks, well, now you're on the land of James and Isabel Davis. The cool thing is their house is right there, right near the first tee. Their house is still sitting there on the golf course. But what about Red Oaks? Red Oaks has a different history. When you're golfing at Red Oaks, you're on top of a river. There's a river right underneath you. The river was called the Red Run. In old records of Oakland County, it's mentioned many times. But by 1930, it was causing flooding problems. It was kind of in the way. The area was developing like crazy. So people decide to bury the river. And between 1930 and 1954, we essentially bury the Red Run. And now it's part of a huge drainage system. And underneath you, when you're golfing at Red Oaks. And then what about Glen Oaks? Well, if you're at Glen Oaks, you cannot help but see this amazing building. This is the clubhouse. This is a designated Michigan historic site in Oakland County. And it was designed by Emily Butterfield. She was the first woman registered architect in all of Michigan. And she's a longtime resident of Farmington. She designed that building. So you can see Oak County parks are filled with history. It's our history. It's Oakland County history. 
But history is not very good unless you can share it. It's nothing you keep in a box and put in a library. So we work really hard in the park system to share our history. I brought you an example tonight. During the pandemic, we wanted a way to communicate about the parks with people when we couldn't do face-to-face. -face. So we created what we called I Spy Sheets. I Spy Lion Oaks, I Spy Orient Oaks. And on one side is the natural resources and the back side is the history. So you have a packet with all 14 parks in it. And then I run a series of fireside chats from uh, September through April where I do different topics in Oakland County history that have a connection to one of our parks. And then I do trailside chats sometimes in the summer. And we are trying something new that they've talked me into this summer. We're doing sunset history chat cruises on Crooked Lake on a pontoon boat. So we'll be doing seven different nights where I'll be teaching history on a pontoon boat. I'm not quite sure how they talked me into that one, but I think that's going to be fun. And then we, of course, do presentations in the Buell Mansion. We give tours of the Buell Mansion. We do events there. And then this great big barn, I hope you visited. This is at Springfield Oaks. We do tours of the barn. And every June, we do tea parties. Just last week, I did three tea parties, and yes, it was 90 degrees, it was very humid, and it was in a 150-year-old barn, and we were serving them hot tea. But believe it or not, they were very, very successful. And then we've been doing history programming in our campgrounds in the evening and in our nature centers. My very, very favorite are some history mystery boxes that we've, that we've um, collected. Each one we've put in a history artifact. This is an old insulator from the old power lines that are there, which kids think is something from ancient Egypt because they've never seen this. And that's part of my favorite thing with these boxes is working with kids. You know, we have to give kids a feeling that history is important. Our history is important. So I love working with kids with these boxes. She has discovered a 100-year-old Dr. West mm. toothbrush. The bristles are gone. They won't last. But where did we find the toothbrush? Well, we dug it up in an archaeological excavation I have going on at the Bailey Farm at Independence Oaks. We're into year three of digging down through the old farm dump. As my son likes to say, my mom digs in people's old trash. But you find a lot of cool stuff there. So we do have archaeology as part of our park history. So I hope you can see that history is alive and well in the Oakland County parks. And it's our Oakland County history because with 14 parks, we're spread right across the county. So we pretty much cover all the critical pieces of Oakland County history. And me, I have the best job in the world because I get to discover it and then I get to share it. Um, and I wanted to thank you because you let me do that tonight with you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. I just want to add a couple things about Carol. She, I've, I've seen her at a few of our parks functions, um, but I went to, to a, a M Parks conference, and lo and behold, she was a speaker at the conference. And I was just, I, I just couldn't believe that she was there, number one, and number two, that it was so interesting. And it was pretty much the same kind of presentation that you saw today. Like I say, I'm a history buff, kind of, and uh, it means a lot to me, uh, but she just does a fabulous job, and it's so good that she has YouTube videos that you can Google and get and watch them. They run about 20 to 40 minutes. 8 to 15. Oh, okay. They're, they're just so interesting about the history of Oakland County, so if you get an opportunity, look at those. I wanted to recognize her with a proclamation. Uh, um, let me read some of her background, because it, it is pretty, uh, pretty interesting. This is a surprise, by the way. I had no idea this was happening. Uh, this proclamation is honoring Carol Egbo, whereas remarkable individuals such as Carol help us better understand our present and envision the possibilities of future by educating us about the past. And whereas, a uh, lifelong county resident for four decades uh, of experience in cultural s studies, history, archaeology, 
Um, Carol began as a volunteer for Oakland County Parks in 2010 and was hired as a project advisor in 2013. In her role, Carol design, has designed and hosted several fireside chat programs, um, events such as Time for Tea uh, and uh, Into the Past, Tea in the Past, uh, through, the, uh, through the Kids Day Camp Experiences, Family Archaeology, archaeology Digs, videos that she's produced at the end of the, at each of the county parks, that's the ones I mentioned. Um, whereas in addition to her work with the county, Carol taught, graduated, and undergraduate study, social studies methods at Oakland University and served as a summer instructor at UCLA. She has been an employed as a social studies consultant for several metropolitan Detroit school districts and an educational advisor for the Michigan Department of Transportation. She is the author and editor of several textbooks and curricula units for students of all ages from elementary through college coursework. Carol has been honored for her many achievements in education, volunteerism, and uh, with awards from the Michigan Council of Social Studies, Newsweek, M Parks, the National Association of County Organizations, and the Daughters of the American Revolution. Whereas she holds a Bachelor of Science uh, degree in education and a Master's uh, in curriculum, she has also pursued postgraduate studies in history. Further, she is a Fulbright Scholar on, the, on an academic professional cultural exchange grant experience in Tan Tanzania. Um, so with this, Carol, I'll give it to you. This is from the entire Board of Commissioners. It's just got a couple signatures on here, and I apologize for oh, that. I, I thought everybody you. was going to sign. Thank, thank, thank you for all you do for us. Oh, oh, oh. I would be remiss if I didn't say, uh, if I didn't have a debt of gratitude towards Carol for the work she did when we celebrated the women's right to vote, the 100 year anniversary, we relied on Carol. And I, actually we're now working on another project honoring the first African American female landowner in Michigan, Elizabeth Forth, and of course we've got Carol on board. Congratulations, Carol. Thank you, Carol, for all your work that you do for our community. All right, um, we're gonna move on to our next uh, communication. I think we got some grant exceptions, and so I'll call on the clerk. Mr. Chair, just one. Uh, one communication dated June 23rd, 2022 to the Oakland County Board of Commissioners. Please accept this letter as notification that I've exercised the authority granted to the chairperson of the board to approve grant applications in excess of $50,000 for the purpose of meeting a submission deadline. Due to the grant or deadlines in the board's grant submission process and calendar, it is not possible to submit the application for full board consideration in accordance with our normal procedures. I have authorized the submission of the following grant applications. Number one. FY 2022 Comprehensive Opioid Stimulant and Substance Abuse Site-Based Program for the Sheriff's Office in the amount of $1,467,744. The grant application deadline was June 17, 2022. And number two, Fiscal Year 2022 Preventing School Violence, BJA Stop School Violence Program for the Emergency Management and Homeland Security Department in the amount of $1 million. The grant application deadline was June 21st, 2022. Sincerely, David T. Woodman, Woodward, Chairman, Oakland County Board of Commissioners. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, motion to receive and file. Moved by Cavell, seconded by uh, McGilvery. All in favor of receiving those communications, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. 
Let the record reflect the communications are received unanimously. I'm going to call on um, Commissioner Nelson. We need to make another motion as it related to the agenda that we passed to take up items that were uh, taken up in, today, in the committee meeting right before this meeting. So, Commissioner Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to request a waiver of Rule 3 for public health and safety items 12M, which is the 57 District Court grant amendment to the fiscal year 2022 Michigan Drug Court grant, uh, item 12N which is the 52nd District Court Grant Amendment to the Fiscal Year 2022 Michigan Mental Health Court Grant, and then item uh, 12O, which is the Board of Commissioners Resolution Increasing Marine Patrol Safety uh, on our county lakes during the 2022 boating season. These resolutions, as you said, were uh, just taken up prior to tonight's board meeting. This is a housekeeping uh, uh, um, motion moved by Commissioner Nelson, seconded by Commissioner Lubes. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Let the record reflect that the motion approves as uh, passes unanimously. This will bring us to the first public comment of tonight's meeting. This is the opportunity for uh, members of the public to come speak on items on the agenda. Um, and so I will, people who signed up, I'll start here and then um, take up anybody additionally that needs to come up. Um, may I, um, from Honor Community Health, the first people I got signed up is Dr. Latoya Austin and Hamadi and Dr. Patel. Okay, thank you. There's another, there's another public comment, so if you want to speak later. Um, Dr. Ham Hamadi Patel, we pass for now. Yes. All right, thank you. So we'll move us to Tasha Shurgan. Tasha Shurgan from Clarkston. Um, tonight, I'm going to read comments from Connie Johnson from Milford, Michigan, who was unable to attend, but she wanted to convey this information. Regarding the proposal on the consent agenda, local fiscal recovery funds to create the Oakland County Schools Mental Health Grant Program to address students' mental health needs in Oakland County, as outlined beginning on page 1347. I am astonished and disgusted with this board. The audacity of creating yet another ad hoc committee and handling over $10 million thinking that this will tackle the mental health crisis in our public schools. Making a committee out of people who aren't mental health professionals with zero training in mental health at any level and letting them make decisions without public oversight is straight up criminal. Further, even thinking that this is a manner for the schools to handle by requiring teachers to receive even more training in subject matter that does not look anything like learning. Mental health professionals should remain available in the public sector, not in the schools. The Michigan Department of Health and Human Services does not belong in the schools, demanding that medical interventions be part of school life, which is exactly what this and other MDHHS expenditures aim to do. Yes, we have a crisis of mental health in kids. And yes, this board has blood on its hands for allowing MDHHS to run amok when our kids needed them the most to make a stand and cut the funding to the LHD. No, you didn't get to try to fix the problem you helped to exacerbate by creating an ad hoc committee to be another funding point for MDHHS to have access to our children and their private health information. This goes beyond the pale of violating privacy. This is a full out war on our children, their private health information, and the by any means possible approach of this board to try and fix what you broke. Keep mental health centers and services available in the community with the means by which parents may choose if and when to access those services. We do not want, need, or will allow public schools to become the one-stop shop as touted by, touted by the CDC's program, whole community, whole school, whole child. If you hear nothing else, please hear this. Leave our children alone. We are not asking, we're telling. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next, I got Ross Barranco, followed by Heather Smiley. For a moment, I'm gonna pass the gavel over to Commissioner Gershon. Ross Barranco, City of Novi. Um, kudos to Commissioner Lubes. Um, she did look into the um, what happens to the building after a two and a half million dollar investment in it if um, the Corktown Health goes out of um, business, and uh, so I appreciate that that was looked into. Kudos to Commissioner Moss for looking out for the Oakland County taxpayers. 
a point of correction for Commissioner Cavell. It is our Wayne County neighbors who are stabbing us in the back. The Oakland County taxpayers are the ones that's being stabbed in the back, not our neighbors in Wayne County. Wayne County hasn't been paying their taxes and we shouldn't be liable for paying their taxes. 13B, the road commission that was um, moved, um, I think the commission should be where it was. 13A and 9F should not be approved until a map is provided showing the location of the fencing and the gates. There may be opportunities to reduce the footage of fencing and the number of gates that are required, which would reduce the cost and wasn't even considered in committee. 9E, unelected officials shouldn't have the right of approval for the agreement. The Board of Commissioners should be their approving body by vote. 9B and 14B, there should be a comprehensive five-year plan for all Oakland County and it be amended in January annually to consider any new developments if necessary. 9G, the federal, state, and county's mishandling of the COVID response is the cause of the need of having to throw money at all these COVID issues. This board is the cause of these damages for allowing it to happen in our county when you had the duty to block it. 11A through F, we're three quarters through the month of June and you're a day late and a dollar short. These should have been addressed last month, not now. Why is Lego always late to the party? The drug kits, um, I agree with Commissioner McGrew, um, your, your name, um, that the machine shouldn't just be um, un, unmonitored, that um, it should be a, something that, some kind of monitoring system to make sure that people aren't just going in there taking one kit after another when they're at $100 per kit. So I, I think there should be some regulation to that on these vending machines and they shouldn't be um, allowed to be freely, um, freely accessed without um, some kind of check on how many kits a person is taking and, and do they really have a need for those kits because each one of them does cost $100. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barranco. Heather Smiley, followed by Alexa Stannard. Uh, Heather Smiley from Lake Orion. Um, since you guys like to change everything on the agenda, I guess I have to slow my roll on a couple of discussions. Um, I know that you spoke about um, the first black uh, female. Um, I also would like to speak of another first black female, Secretary of State Christina Caramo candidate. Um, recently, Oakland County had a Juneteenth National Freedom Celebration. Um, and unfortunately, she was denied access to the event. So I'm going to read an email that she has, that I had received, um, specifically from her. It says, June 18, 2022, Novi, Michigan. The Michigan Secretary of State Republican can candidate, Christina Caramo, recently received surprising and disappointing news. Christina applied for participation in the Juneteenth Family Reunion 2022, sponsored by the Curators of Black Excellence, taking place on June 18, 2022 in Southfield, Michigan. Juneteenth- Ms. can I interrupt me? What agenda item are you speaking to? We're talking about Juneteenth. It's getting approved. It's right on the front of the agenda. Uh, we can start the time back. Thank you. Um, so, where was I? Excellence taking place on June 18th, 2022 in Southfield, Michigan. Juneteenth is a national holiday and commemorates the true ending of slavery in the United States. The holiday is an opportunity for all Americans to celebrate. Christina was anxious to meet her supporters and celebrate together. They say, we encourage all community members and allies to join us celebrating Juneteenth. Our event promotes inclusivity and encourages everyone to participate but apparently inclusivity extends only to black candidates that are democratic. Christina is a woman of faith and passionately committed to the morals and ethics and policy. She is running to restore integrity in the office of Secretary of State. Um, and I also wanted to just point out that this particular uh, group of body is very uh, wordy as far as the inclusive, equity, and sustainability. Um, 
But that doesn't sound very inclusive. The Democrats denying someone of color that would be participating in the Juneteenth celebration. There's a couple other things on the agenda too that I see that fall place. Um, one in particular is going to be the aviation lease uh, for midfield management. It is a 20 year lease where we're only gonna be collecting 211,000 annually, yet they include private jets, um, have charges for their runway, they have luxury lounge areas for all of their people, um, and it also is 16 acres, so that is a very good deal for 211,000 a year. It also is gonna be neighbor to um, the hangars that are being leased by the U.S. Border and Customs, which they don't really have to pay for. Another thing on here that disturbed me is the, in the, proje the projects, because you guys had 1,483 pages, so it took me a little bit to get through that. Uh, project CSHCS, which is vaccine, uh, something to do with vaccines. So basically, people are getting monetized to push vaccines, which we know that happened quite a bit. Um, and I do want to talk again about transparency. Um, as far as your meeting transparency, I know that yesterday at one o'clock there was no information for the economics. Um, and I also am fearful with how you're picking and choosing your committees. Um, I feel that there are some things that are gonna be a, um, that's what I always say, it, um, interest you know, like a lack of interest, especially if we have people that are making decisions on unions when they're affiliated with the unions, things as far as the road commission, but again, that got taken off because they think our voices were heard on that one. So thanks for your time. Thank you. Um, next up is Alexa uh, Stannard, followed by Catherine Kennedy. Hi. Hopefully this will be a little bit of a palate cleanser. Um, my name is Alexa Standard. I live in Huntington Woods, but I am here on behalf of Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin, who represents several communities in North Oakland County. And I just want to voice my, um, voice her support, of course, but also thank you guys for your support of the Northwest Oakland Sewer Project. I know this project has been um, in discussion and in the works for many months, and I want to just really say how much she appreciates the fact that this was um, considered so intentionally. Chairman Woodward, I know you really like listened and, and heard us out and heard Brian and the, and the staff at the county out. Um, I know a lot of you guys got personal phone calls from her asking for you to um, consider this, this project. She does not lean in on these things very frequently. Um, and her district lines are getting redrawn in the fall. Audience, please be quiet. Um, are getting redrawn in the fall. And these are communities that are not going to even be able to vote her back in should she um, luck out that way. Uh, we are here because we just think it's the right thing to do. This project is going to be transformative for these small rural communities that we've spent a lot of time in that have had a really hard time flourishing because of the water systems that they're facing. Um, and you just don't get a new sewer system for 10 million bucks. So thank you. Um, we really look forward to continuing to partner with the commission. We know that there are water problems throughout the county. Um, and this is just like a little piece of it that we're breaking off with this one. Um, but we're very excited about it and just want to voice our appreciation for your support. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, next up is Catherine Kennedy. Good evening, commissioners. This is Catherine Kennedy from Lake Orion. And the first item I'd like to address is item 14A, where the treasurer's office has doing an interlocal agreement with the State Land Bank Authority to create Oakland County Land Bank Authority. Apparently this was discussed in the June 15th finance meeting, but there was a July 1st deadline on some of the things that were introduced. But in the meeting at the Democratic Caucus, I was advised that this is actually a separate entity housed with the treasurer's office. So it's not part of the board. And um, so it's just an actual agreement. And they're doing it because they can acquire title to property. Most land banks find new owners and hold it until they do. There's a 50% tax capture to go back to the land bank that lost out on brownfield funds. I'm not sure how that was, but they work with Stan Land Bank and Woodward on that one. And then apparently it was quoted as a really good economic development tool. That actually has me extraordinarily concerned because on May 12th, this board uh, voted to give money to the World Economic Forum. 
and Sean Carlson, Oakland County was listed as a VP of World Economic Forum on their website. I don't know for sure if it's the same one, but it seemed awfully coincidental. And then we just gave them $3 million. And there's so many things going on where they did not tell us about the fact that there's 464 properties that they're now only going to do with an online auction with a tax sale info website. I don't even know who owns it. But the people were not allowed to even know this information unless they attended the Democratic caucus on June 7th or maybe today before this meeting because these things are being done in study sessions instead of in the full board like they're supposed to be, according to the Open Meetings Act, sir. And they also have on the new ballots, shamefully on the primary for August 2nd, there are libraries that are now going to be defunding, I forget if it was the Brownfield or the DDA, so they Libraries apparently changed laws. Agenda. This is all about the things. Okay, I have plenty more to go for. Connie covered the mental health grants. I object to United Way being used for any monies in our county for mental health or for children. The multi-year senior plan, 12A, I agree, object to that. That was actually entirely moved to a study group, so there's no transparency on anything done there. But I objected when Mr. Hobbs thought we could expand our services, even giving financial service to seniors with reverse mortgages. When I asked if they had E&O for all those extra health and financial services going to seniors' homes, um, I doubt they do. Anyway, uh, I take offense to the fact Immigrant Month and LGBT is a month, but Mother's Day, Father's Day, Thanks. world, everything else is just a day. So I guess I'm out of time. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Ms. Kennedy. All right, uh, that, I, um, anybody else to speak in the first public comment? There's a second public comment um, after today's uh, agenda items. Seeing none, I'll close the first public comment um, and we'll move us to the, reg, uh, to the consent agenda. I need a motion for the consent agenda. Moved by Cavell, seconded by Gingell. Any uh, discussion on any items on the consent agenda? Seeing none, Mr. Clerk, will you please prompt the vote? Mr. Chair, you have 17 yeas, two nays. A sufficient number voted in the affirmative. The, re the consent agenda is adopted. This will now bring us to the regular agenda, and I will call on the Chair, uh, Commissioner William Miller. Commissioner Miller. Thank you, Chairman. First, I have three agenda items here. Uh, first agenda item is Children's Village Security Enhancement Fencing and Gates. I move. You uh, move by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner McGilvery. Uh, any discussion? Commissioner Kowal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, on behalf of uh, Commissioner Spiz, who couldn't be here tonight, and I do feel the same way that he does as well, I think that there could be more study done on this to get the cost down, um, and I don't think it's a time-sensitive issue, so I would uh, move to postpone to the next uh, board meeting. Uh, moved by Commissioner Kowal, seconded by Commissioner Long. All in favor of postponing, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. 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 Uh, the nays have it, the motion fails. Um, any further discussion on the item? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Clerk, please prompt the vote. Thank <laughs> you. 
Mr. Chair, you have 16 yeas, four nays. That's sufficient number voting the affirmative. The resolution is adopted. Commissioner Miller. Thank you, Chairman. Set my next agenda item is miscellaneous resolution 2020, actually 22-140, Board of Commissioners resolution opposing the imposition of Highland Park's water and sewer debt of, on Oakland County communities. I think we'll have moved by Commissioner Moss, seconded by Commissioner Miller. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Kirk, please pop, Mr. Clerk, please prompt the vote. Mr. Chair, you have 18 yeas, two nays. A sufficient number voted in the affirmative. The resolution is adopted. Commissioner Miller. Thank you, Chairman. My next and last agenda item is, is miscellaneous resolution executive's office interlocal agreement with Oakland, Count Oakland University for partnership in performing research and services related to the, the advancement of stability throughout Oakland County. Moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Cabell. Any discussion? Commissioner Long. Um, thank you for pulling off this off the consent agenda. Um, I will be voting no. Um, I, I think we're throwing a lot of money on sustainability. Um, I did not support the position of the officer, so I want to be consistent. I'm not going to support funding the um, uh, stu another study for it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, I just want to correct. This is a partnership of actually working in research to be able to implement tools to advance sustainability across the I mean across Oakland County. Um, and I will be voting yes. Um, any further discussion? See none. Um, Mr. Clerk, please prompt the vote. Mr. Chair, you have 13 yeas, seven nays. A sufficient number of voting the affirmative. The resolution is adopted. Commissioner Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That concludes my report. Great. Thank you very much. I will now call on the chair of the Finance Committee, the Honorable Gwen Markham. Commissioner Markham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my first item under the Finance Committee is <clears throat> with the State Land Bank Authority to create an Oakland County Land Bank Authority. Uh, moved by Commissioner Markham, seconded by Commissioner McGilvery. Any discussion? Commissioner Gingell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to <coughs> take the opportunity to thank the Treasurer for coming in the Minority Caucus and talking through the item with us. Um, uh, it appears that he and his staff have done a lot of homework, and I appreciate their research. But in my opinion, um, I don't believe a land bank is the best path forward for Oakland County at this point in time. We did study it a number of years ago, and I recognize things have changed. But with the economy and where things are heading, um, in addition to the ability to access a, a land grant bank through the state, if necessary, as evidenced in a project in commerce recently. I just don't believe this is something we need to set up as an independent entity and agency of Oakland County. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gingell. Any uh, further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Clerk, please prompt the vote. Mr. Chair, you have 13 yeas, seven nays. A sufficient number voting the affirmative. The resolution is adopted. Commissioner Markham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my next item is uh, through the Water Resources Commissioner, a resolution for the Northwest Oakland Sewer General Fund transfer to the Drainage District account. Uh, moved by Commissioner Hoffman, seconded by Commissioner Markham. Any discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Clerk, please prompt the vote. Thank you. 
Mr. Chair, you have 20 yeas, zero nays. Sufficient number voting the affirmative. The resolution is adopted. Commissioner Markham. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. That concludes the report of the Finance Committee for this evening. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, there is no business on the regular agenda under legislative affairs and government operations. And I will call now on the chair of the Public Health and Safety Committee, Commissioner Penny Lubes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have five items under Public Health and Safety Committee this evening. The first is a uh, resolution with the, an agreement with the Chartered Township of Independence an amendment number one to the 2022-2024 Law Enforcement Services Agreement. Moved by Commissioner Lube, seconded by Commissioner Joliet. Any discussion? Seeing none, um, Mr. Clerk, please prompt the vote. I'm not getting a prompt, Chair. Right. So I do a voice? Yep. Commissioner Jackson, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Chair, you have 20 yeas, zero nays. Sufficient number voting the affirmative. The resolution is adopted. Commissioner Lubes. The next item is a resolution appropriating American Rescue Plan Act local fiscal recovery funds for the Healthy Food Access Initiative. Moved by Commissioner Flubes, seconded by Commissioner Gingell. I believe we have an amendment. Moved by Commissioner Gingell, seconded by Commissioner Cavell. Commissioner Gingell. Thank you, Mr. Good? Chair. I mean, I think uh, the amendment is included in the, in the uh, items on the agenda in front of us. And just a short summary is on the third, fourth whereas, it changes the total amount provided in the grant to 1.7 million. Um, of which a million of it will go to Oakland Hope. On the first now, therefore, it resolved, uh, it shows the change in the dollar amounts appropriated accordingly. And then the, there's a couple additions here. Um, now it be further resolved. You'll see that it talks about the Board of Commissioners authorizing the appropriation of the American Rescue Plan Act local physical recovery funds to the Health and Human Services Department to allow Oakland Hope to make capital improvements in their current facility which assists with emergency healthy food and serves several uh, uh, hundreds and thousands of members of our community on a regular basis. And then there's another, be, be it therefore resolved, that Oakland, uh, if Oakland Hope's current facility is sold, within 10 years of receiving the dollars from the county, all funds shall be returned to the county, and with an exception being reimbursed to the reimbursement being that the County Board of Commissioners um, has the ability to approve the uh, transfer of, of the dollars or funds to another nonprofit agency at their discretion. So those are the amendments to the resolution I'm proposing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The Commissioner Gingell moves that amendment seconded by Commissioner Powell. Any further discussion? Commissioner Cavell. I just want to say thank you to Commissioner Gingell for being so pragmatic and forward thinking about this and having such concern for our shared communities. Thank you. Um, all in favor, uh, Mr. Uh, how about Mr. Clerk, why'd you prompt the vote? Mr. Chair, you have 19 yeas, one nay. A sufficient number voting the affirmative. The amendment is adopted. That brings us back to the main motion. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none, um, Mr. Clerk, please prompt the vote on the main motion.
Commissioner Nelson? Mr. Chair, you have 18 yeas, two nays. A sufficient number voted in the affirmative. The resolution is adopted. Commissioner Lubes. My next item is a resolution appropriating American Rescue Plan Act local fiscal recovery funds for a food landscape study. Moved by Commissioner Lubes, seconded by Commissioner Powell. Any discussion? Commissioner Long. Um, yes, thank you, um, Chairman Wood Woodward. Uh, I'm voting no on some of these. Um, uh, American Rescue Plan Act um, funding. Just, I, I'm thinking um, it is federal tax dollars. It's uh, the people's money, and we are starting to get a lot of programs. I think and giving a lot of money away to different things. So um, I'm selecting, uh, being more selective of which ones I approve or not. So this on this one, I just thought I'm going to vote no. So I just want to explain. I'm not necessarily saying these are all bad programs. But I think there are some that will work and some that won't, and I'm not going to keep supporting it, um, keep supporting all of them now. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Long. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none. Oh, Commissioner Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll be supporting this. Uh, I'll just tell you I had a meeting with uh, Representative Slotkin a few weeks back, or maybe a month ago, and she went in detail on the insecurity of the landscape of food for the nation. And it's not just Oakland County, it's everywhere. So this is great that we're taking this initiative. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Miller. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Clerk, please prompt the vote. Commissioner Moss, Commissioner Moss, most votes no. Mr. Chair, you have 13 yeas, seven nays. A sufficient number voting in the affirmative. The resolution is adopted. Um, Commissioner Lubes. Mr. Chair, the next item is a resolution appropriating American Rescue Plan Act local fiscal recovery funds for Honor Community Health. Moved by Commissioner Lubes, seconded by Commissioner Gingell. Any discussion? <laughs> Seeing no scope, oh, Commissioner Juliet. Um, I want to say when I saw this at first, I was a bit confused. I didn't understand um, what had happened, why a new residency program was having to be created. I didn't know that the one at Pontiac General had not happened. So um, we had a nice presentation to our caucus right before this. So um, I will be supporting this, but up till this point, I had there's no supporting information on here, which was rather frustrating to make a decision on, but um, I will be supporting this as we did get a presentation before that. Thank you, Commissioner. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Clerk, please prompt the vote. Mr. Chair, you have 19 yeas, one nay. A uh, sufficient number voting the affirmative. The resolution is adopted. Commissioner Loops. The next item is a resolution appropriating American Rescue Plan Act local fiscal recovery funds for Cork Town Health. Moved by Commissioner Loops, seconded by Commissioner Cavell. Any discussion? I think we have an amendment. Commissioner Gershenson. In the second, be it further resolved. Uh, my amendment is if the Corktown House building in Oakland County is sold within 10 years of receiving $2,500,000 uh, of county financial support, all funds shall be returned to the county. An exception to the reimbursement of funds back to the county shall be contingent upon approval of the purchasing nonprofit agency by the Oakland County Board of Commissioners. I mean, a similar for the capital outlay in the previous resolution. Moved by Commissioner Gershenson, seconded by Commissioner Miller. Any discussion on, uh, on, on the amendment? Discussion on the amendment or the resolution? The resolution. Okay. Wait. So I'll come back to you um, in a second. Uh, any discussion on the amendment? Commissioner Miller. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I just want to thank Ms. Uh, Commissioner Gershenson for bringing this up and putting this in there. It's a good catch and a good protection for the county. Thank you. 
Uh, Mr. Clerk, please um, prompt the vote on the amendment. Moved by Gershenson, seconded by Miller. I think it was, yes, Miller. On the amendment. On the amendment. Mr. Chair, on the amendment, you have 18 yeas, two nays. A sufficient number voted in the affirmative. The amendment is adopted. It brings us back to the main motion. Commissioner Joliet. Um, so I have the same issue with this resolution. There was, heart, there was no really supporting documentation on this. Um, I'm not necessarily against the premise, but I would like to make a motion to postpone until we can be furnished with further information to explore Corktown Health, um, the members that it serves out of Macomb, Detroit, and Oakland County. Uh, motion to postpone by Commissioner Joliet, seconded by Commissioner Hoffman. Uh, all in favor of postponement say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 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 Um, the nays have it, the motion fails. Back to the regular motion. Seeing no, any further discussion on the, uh, the resolution? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Clerk, will you please prompt the vote on the resolution? On the resolution as amended. Mr. Chair, you have 13 yeas, seven nays. A sufficient number voted in the affirmative. The resolution is adopted. Commissioner Lubes. There is no further business from the Public Health and Safety Committee this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we move on to reports of special committees. There is none, special order of business none, unfinished business none, moves us to new and miscellaneous business. And I will call on uh, Commissioner Charles. Thank I realize you. it's slightly out of order, but this is one, <laughs> the first that's gonna suspend the rules. Yes. yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, let me get my document. So I am requesting suspension of the board rules today uh, for the purposes of a water affor affordability fund. As uh, you can see in your packet, we know that COVID-19 has disproportionately hurt families throughout Oakland County. We also know that due to the COVID-19 pandemic and related water shutoff moratoriums, arrearages for past due water bills has increased in, in resulting in 12,000 households in Oakland County being at risk of foreclosure due to property tax certifications of water arrearages. And so in a, a partnership with resources like the Great Lakes Water Authority, RAP, which is Water Residential Assistance Program, and the Low Income Household Water Assistance Program, we would like to be able to sustain the remainder of the grant from the state of Michigan. We wanna sustain our efforts because the grant from the state of Michigan has effectively ro uh, uh, run out. And so we wanna increase the assistance, the attention to people actually participating in this program and as a result, asking for 240,000 in ARPA funds. You can see the details there. Any questions, uh, we've got folks available to answer. Thank you, okay. So Commissioner Charles moves to suspend the rule to take this up in part because July 1 is when the next cycle of funding from RAPS is made available. Moved by Commissioner Charles to suspend the rule, seconded by Commissioner Markham. Um, any, uh, um, all in favor of suspending the rule say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 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 The ayes have it. The rules are suspended. The moves us to the, uh, Commissioner Charles moves the resolution, seconded by Commissioner Powell. Um, I think there's some clarity. This is actually item C under new and miscellaneous business. Commissioner Long. Um, I don't have the resolution, nor have I ever seen it. It is under new and miscellaneous business. It's got in, a, it should be under. Got a refresh. Refresh again? Refresh, yeah. 
Well, how did we derive at the 240,000? I guess I'll ask that question yeah, when um, I'm trying to. If you uh, take a look at your um, packet here, there are supporting documents from the Water Resource Commissioner that speaks exactly to the line items for each of that, each, each of those pieces. Refresh your thing. Any okay, I did find it, okay. thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Clerk, please prompt the vote. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I need a verbal vote. A verbal, okay. A what? Mr. Clerk, can you call on Commissioner Lubes to vote? She needs a verbal vote, Commissioner Lubes. Yeah, I don't know why I can't. Mr. Chair, you have 14 yeas, six nays. A sufficient number voted in the affirmative. The resolution is adopted. Um, next up, we have the other suspension of the rules. I'm going to recognize uh, Commissioner McGilvery. To Thank, you, <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have a, introducing a resolution uh, recognizing July 2022 as a National Parks and Recreation Month. I would ask for the suspension of the rules. Because July is right around the corner, uh, moved by uh, Commissioner McGilvery, seconded by Commissioner Long to suspend the rules. All in favor of suspending the rules say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. That's a good Let the record reflect that unanimously uh, the rules are suspended. This resolution is moved by Mc uh, Commissioner McGilvery, seconded by Commissioner Long. Any discussion? Seeing no, seeing no discussion, um, uh, Mr. Clerk, please prompt the vote. Mr. Chair, you have 19 yeas, zero nays. A sufficient number voted in the affirmative. The resolution is adopted. Um, let's move us on to Commissioner Jackson. Thank you, Chair. I'm bringing forth and asking for a suspension of the rules for um, to recognize July as Minority Mental Health Awareness Month in Oakland County. And I'm requesting suspension of the rules. Suspension of the rules. Uh, moved by Commissioner Jackson, seconded by Commissioner Miller to suspend the rules. All in favor of suspending the rules say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Let the record reflect that the motion to suspend the rules is adopted unanimously. Um, Commissioner Janet Jackson moves, seconded by Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Charles um, to uh, uh, recognize July 22 as Minority Mental Health Awareness Month. Any discussion? See none. Mr. Clerk, please prompt the vote. Mr. Chair, you have 19 yeas, zero nays. A sufficient number voted in the affirmative and the resolution is adopted. Um, next up, I, Commissioner Hoffman and myself are introduced to resolution. Commissioner Hoffman, can I recognize you to refer it to LAGA? Yes, please. Commissioner uh, Hoffman um, asked uh, to introduce resolution encouraging the governor of Michigan legislature to significantly increase the state earn, earned income tax credit and refer to LAGO uh, without objection. And then Commissioner Gingell, can I ask you to um, introduce the next one. Okay, the sponsorship for 22 yeah. Arts Beats and Eats Festival. Yeah. I don't have it. No. Okay. Well, to and re we'll refer that to finance without objection. Thank you. Um, and are there any other new business to be brought before the board tonight? See none. This will bring us to announcements. Oh, that's one. Oh. Commissioner Gershenson. Thank you. Uh, I would like to just take a moment to acknowledge the loss of uh, Penny Lube's dad, 
he, he passed this morning, and Penny exemplified how, what a, an, an incredible daughter. She took him dinner personally for the last four years every night. Oh. It's a big loss for the Lubes family, and I just wanted to mention, I believe services will be on Tuesday, and for us to keep the Lubes family in our hearts. Um, on a more upbeat note, before the meeting, I did get a call from members of the Chaldean Chamber who have invited commissioners to do a tour of the Chaldean Cultural Museum, which is located on Walnut Lake Road in the Shenandoah uh, Country Club. And they've also invited us to dinner. And I can tell you that the food there is amazing. So if anybody's interested, let me know, and I will set it up. We'll get a date. It will probably be in, um, in August. But please just send me an email if you'd like to attend. Thank you, Thank you. Commissioner Gershenson. Um, any further announcements? Commissioner Wipert. Thank you. Um, just let the board know that uh, Commissioner Markham and I were just down at SEMCOG uh, General Assembly, and it's, uh, there was also a regional review committee meeting, and um, SEMCOG granted Oakland County and Macomb County 40000 each for broadband planning study. So. Excellent. Thank you. So uh, I made the announcement that both of you, I mean, we're here at the start of the meeting because you're doing work and you brought $40,000 back. So feel free to be late any night. Uh, thank, thank you, Commissioner Wipert. Thank you, Commissioner Markham, for, for your service as well. Um, any further announcements? Seeing none, um, this will bring us to the second public comment of the evening. I'll start by those who uh, signed up, and then if you didn't sign up, I'll call on you um, afterwards. Again, this is the I mean, same procedure. Uh, keep your comments to three minutes. Um, I ask that you introduce yourself and community, direct your comments to me. Um, and this is an opportunity to talk on any topic um, um, on or off the agenda. Uh, first call, um, Tasha Shergan. Tasha Shergan from Clarkston. I want to acknowledge that this is my one year anniversary of attending commissioners meetings. I've only missed a couple, right? I'm sure you guys all know me and love me. Um, I tried to bring a friend tonight, but she's going to a white fragility speaking engagement in Huntington Woods. I have no idea what that means, but it's concerning to me that, I don't know, we're talking about white fragility. I feel like we're so focused on separating each other by color. Isn't it more important to just be connected to each other, be connected to God, and try and, I don't know, work together to improve our situation? Because it seems pretty dire right now. But I want to acknowledge that there have been so many resolutions. You know, we start off last year, there was the Crown Act resolution, I believe, and that was to prevent discrimination based on hairstyle. That was an interesting resolution. Um, more currently, there's all these, oh, bye, Commissioner Powell. Good to uh, see uh, you. Tasha, bye. please direct your um, comments to me. So, but my point is, for a year now, we've been asking for a resolution to support medical freedom, vaccine choice, and against discrimination based on your vaccine status. It doesn't seem to be very important to you guys, and I'm concerned about that. You, you say you care about your community. Um, I know Ms. Commissioner Gershenson, she told me that I was the small fringe minority, um, but I told her that the reason why I am the small minority is because I'm aware. Most people in our community are not aware of what's going on. And that's really the big problem. They're not attending the commissioner's meeting. The small group of people that are here every time, I appreciate all of you because you are showing up. And it's on us to tell the rest of our county what's going on. The biggest challenge I have is that people that are currently in elected leadership roles have failed us the last two years. And we can no longer, our county can no longer handle this. So I want to remind our citizens, our community, our residents that get out there, vote August 2nd, vote November 8th. Let's turn our county around because I love Oakland County. I want to stay here. So thank you. Thank you, Tasha. Um, I want to recognize, um, I know some people passed in the first public comment, so I want to also afford the opportunity. Does Dr. Latoya Austin want to? Pass, okay. Uh, Dr. Havadi? Pass. Pass, okay. Dr. Patel? 
Thank you all for being here. Um, next up, we got Teresa Renaud. Good evening, elected representatives. I was gonna speak about the road commission, but it was taken off, so I wanna thank you guys for taking it off, but I'm not sure it's gonna stay off. So I thought I'd share just a couple of points that I uh, found today in doing a little bit of research. So why are we even talking about this whole road commission thing and what does that mean? So apparently it bubbled up um, in May on the 17th after negotiations continued to move slowly. I'm reading from an Oakland Press article. By all accounts between county road commission officials and the representatives from operating engineers, that's a union 324, the local union is representing the county's plow drivers and also do road work. They canceled the negotiation set session planned for next week. Sessions are now planned for July, June 7, 15, and 21, so they're over, said Craig Bryson, road commission spokesman. spokesman. We anticipate the negotiations will go to mediation. I have no idea where they stand now, but the interesting thing is, Immediately following that fallout from the negotiations, our own district commissioner, William Miller, introduced a resolution to create a special committee to study road commission operations options. I don't even know what that means. This is all big learning experience. Commissioner, uh, the commissioners referred the resolution to the Economic Development and Infrastructure Committee set to meet on Thursday, the May 18th. This all happened very uh, quickly which seems to be a repetitive situation when there are special projects and it's hard for people to keep up when things are happening behind the scenes like this. So Andrea Ladon last month, who's the road commission chairwoman, told the county commissioners at this special meeting, she expected um, Commissioner Miller to recuse himself from any related discussions as he is the operating engineers, the union, business agent, as well as chairman of the economic and infrastructure committee. Not sure if he recused himself or not. There's a little happy note in 2019 on the union's website announcing the importance of um, William Miller as an Oakland County Board Commissioner. He's excited to serve uh, the folks that he lives and works with in Oakland County. And um, one of the, um, the board members of the union announced him as, uh, as a commissioner, William will have a big influence with our infrastructure needs, creating good paying jobs and apprenticeships as they make decisions on the Oakland County's future of, this is probably too low now, $900 million budget, and that was 2019. So we have potentially a conflict of interest. Not sure if we've recused ourselves. It's always hard to find out what the facts are. Thank goodness we still have some neutral reporting. And that leads me to the third piece, because there was a previous commissioner who was nice enough to put an op-ed in today's um, Oakland Press, where he's basically trying to educate everybody on why this should not happen. I'm going to run out of time, so I'm just going to say thank you for taking it off, but we will be watching. We don't want it back on. we got better things to tackle. Thank you very much. Uh, Lisa Hanlid, then followed by Catherine Kennedy. Hi, I'm Lisa Hamlin. I've never been here. I'm a newbie and I'm very nervous. Welcome. Okay, so um, I'm really surprised to see that you people are just regular folks just like me. Um, I see this man sitting here eating his nuts and his candies and you looking different ways and getting angry at people and we're all, we're all normal and we're all the same. I'm very upset a few days ago I heard that you gave money, that you're going to be giving money to the World Economic Forum. I sat here and I wanted to know how to approach this subject and I saw this wonderful woman, Carol, come up here and talk about history and she shows us this beautiful things that are going on in her parks that I never knew of and it was wonderful to see in here, right? And I will educate myself more on that. What I also am educated on a little bit is the fact that you ignored the fact that communism, globalism, affected our country hugely in 1917 and thereafter. You are opening the door and letting these people in the back door of our county by letting this organization that claims, that claims to, for what? If you look at their website, they are, you will own nothing, you will own nothing, and you will be happy. Okay, Klaus Schwab has said it. We did not vote for Klaus Schwab. How dare you put somebody like that in our community and his beliefs in communism and globalism and calling it other things that it is not. You had no business taking our money and putting somebody so dangerous into our communities. And I can guarantee you, I own a small business, a very successful restaurant in Milford. I was born and raised in Southwest Detroit, 
26 years. I moved out to Milford 30 years ago. I talked to people every day. My parents were extreme John F. Kennedy Democrats. They would never agree to any of this that you people are doing. I don't care what side you're sitting on. What's going on right now is wrong. We can squabble over all these other little monies that you're going to be giving out like candy to people, but letting dangerous people into our community is a fact. And I spoke to people all week long at my restaurant after I heard this was going on. Nobody knows that you have allocated this kind of money to such a dangerous organization that is going to open up the door to such a horrible uh, uh, that, that, that in history has shown that it's not successful. Communism, globalism, okay? This is not going to work. We've seen it happen, all right? I saw Herman Gardens. I lived by them. I had a friend that took a bus there every day. It's not going to work. You need to support these people, and we need to be informed on what's going on. Why aren't you people telling us what's going on? Why don't we know? I'm going to fill this room. I'm going to make it my mission. I've got four little granddaughters, and I'll be darned if you're going to put these communists, globalists, crazies that do not. They do not. Uh, they, they ignore our written laws. They ignore our Constitution. And they want to change the very foundation that we stand on. Democrats and Republicans, why did you wrong? Why did you people do this? Three million dollars. I need a new tooth. Okay? What are you doing? My God, think about the future. What is going on here? Three million dollars, and I understand that you're trying to get money for the UN to do the same purpose, to undermine our laws and our Constitution. Please, God, stop this insanity. Thank you, Thank you ma'am. Uh, Catherine Kennedy, followed by Ross Barranco. Welcome. <laughs> we need more people that actually understand what's going on here. This is the real problem that I see. I feel that God fixed part of my brain so I can tell the truth, because that's all I ever tell. And I was a super nerd before I had a stroke, so although sometimes my communication is a little off, I actually have phenomenal comprehension and some really complicated things. But the thing that I'm very upset with is this board seems to not think that they are supposed to act for operational excellence for 100% of the citizens of this community. That's not what you do. This has become a political nightmare, bouncing balls around. It's really quite pathetic how often I download a packet and then something new appears the next day. That is not transparency. The fact that you have no executive committee, that all decisions in major deliberations are actually done in the Democratic caucus, which is why I take excruciating notes and often bring things to your attention like I did last month, and you did a rebuttal on me saying, saying that, no, I misunderstood, but it sounds like I understood correctly that had to do with the land sale, that I missed the finance meeting on June 15th. So these things are happening so fast and furious, it's like you know full well what you're trying to accomplish, contrary to the best interests of the citizens. And I was trying to add up all the uh, tax, what we have is so like 53 point something, if my math was right. All the d things that we're being taxed on per thousand, it's really quite high. Uh, several of those were supposed to be temporary in 2012. The DIA, where we only, the 44 million apparently goes to support legal and accounting, which that's Plant Moran, I object to them entirely, especially since they did the uh, sneaky meeting at 11.45 on May 4th, 4th to appoint Plant Moran an extra year to audit for 2022. These are things that should never be just done in committee in a work session, but regularly when I attend, it gets spun out to work sessions, so nobody can have any documentation. No, I couldn't even find any packets in the new system for the 929 21 two year 2022 to 24 meeting packet. Why is that not in the new system? And then to think uh, the U of M economic report, I was reviewing that and the executive summary from Oakland County, it doesn't seem to make a bit of sense. I actually understand economics. I don't understand why on page five they have a footnote to the financial statements of, that they were missing all employment data at a county level from Oakland County, 
but they did the U of M economic forecast for 2022-2024 for the state of Michigan and Oakland County, assuming Oakland County is their big gain of winter, not realizing we've been doing deficit spending since December 6th of 2021. So all these extra programs are just adding to the, the uh, expense in, uh, in spite of the fact that revenues are dropping. Thank you. I was just wondering if um, we can roll back the the payments that we've been making for the um, water bills for Highland Park taxes to be credited back to those who are in the arrears and try to help them get out of the arrears by crediting back their, the taxes that they paid for Highland Park and that they will not have to continue paying that so then their subsequent water bills will be less. And um, a lot of people think that the electric cars are kind of the, the end all that's supposed to be going to save the, the world from carbon. But you have to think about where the sources for the batteries are coming from. It's the Ukraine, Russia, and China. And we're, we're ceasing drilling offshore. We're ceasing drilling on federal lands. And we're not producing our natural gas and our oil and our coal. These things are needed even for electric cars. The electric cars have tires on them. Where are you going to get tires from if you stop drilling? I mean, that's what the company, country is leading to, is trying to cease all drilling. And you, your steering wheels are made out of plastic. Your bumpers are made out of plastic. The, wire, the coatings on the electrical wires are made out of plastic. Where are you going to get plastic from if you stop drilling for oil? I think we, we're misguided on these things. I've, I've been in the energy industry for 45 years, and it's always been the, the electricity is one of the most inefficient methods of power. Gas and oil, you can, you can burn directly. Electricity, you need to generate through um, steam, through um, hydrothermal, through waterfalls, through oil, through gas, through coal. It always requires another energy source to, to, um, do, to, to produce the electricity. And then as the electricity is being transmitted across wires, it loses um, energy through resistance. So it's, um, it's not the, the cure-all. We, we have to have a, a mix of all energy sources. We don't want to put all our eggs in one basket of, en of electricity. That's, it's not a wise thing to do. You should, have, you should be able to switch from oil to gas. If gas is cheaper, you should be able to switch to coal. If coal is cheaper than oil and gas, you should be um, flexible. You should have a very flexible system, not a, a uni system that's dependent upon one source of energy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else that would like to speak during public comment? I believe I got everyone that was on the list. Come on down, Ms. Smiley, welcome back. Thank you. I'm gonna do something really off key. I'm gonna start with good things. I know, I'm glad you're all sitting. Um, I'm a big nature nerd, so I do appreciate um, the 13 million that we are putting into investing in the sanitary drains, because obviously our fresh water is very important to our ecosystem, to our recreation, to the birds, the bees, and everything. Um, while I'm not a big fan of changing the rules, I really like the National Parks and Recreation Month idea. That was awesome. Again, big nature nerd. and. Uh, it'd be nice if there was more free days, too, because some families, especially right now, can't afford the access or maybe a discount annual pass. I mean, since we're throwing out billions of dollars, just proved our thought. Um, as I mentioned, I'm not a huge person of change, especially change that is done quickly. Um, I know that our chair uh, put into movement uh, 1.4 million for the opioid substance abuse program. Um, it looked like there wasn't enough time to meet the deadline, so that 1.4 million is gone. Um, another thing that was done the same that day was... That was just a grant application. What's that? We just let the grant application go in. Yeah. So we can get the money to come to us. 
well, then maybe it needs to be specified a little better on the paperwork for layman's like us, because we're the ones that are reading it. But thank it, it, you for. It says grant exception. We need to skip back about five seconds, because you're not. More time. I just if we want, want a to Q and A, we totally can. I'm, not, I'm just saying. You brought I'm it. Correcting. You brought it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it still sounds like wasted money, as you happen to do. Um, where else is there some wasted money? Oh, not wasted money, but I guess maybe a suggestion from someone who is in the vet family, supports the vets. Um, I noticed that you guys got 72,000 for advertising. I have mentioned this before and I've spoke to my local posts, my Eagles, um, my VFW halls. They all have websites nationally. They all have um, local websites. They all have meetings. They all have um, newsletters they send out. So we could eliminate at least half of that by getting it to the post, the legion, the people have the most contact, and then we could use that additional money for resources for the vets. Um, also, fairs. I mean, everyone likes a party, but I don't think we need to throw a party for resources um, to show them how to use the resources or what resource, resources are available. I think it would be better used to take that money and actually give them the resources. But, you know, who am I? Um, and as far as the sustainability throughout Oakland County, I do like looking into sustainability, and I like that this is actually defined as sustainability, which is the ability to maintain a certain um, role. So I see that you're looking into our forest, our, you know, our, our nature area, um, but I think more information needs to be uh, why we're giving them $100,000. If it's the college, don't they have like people looking for a degree that can do it for discount or for free? Just saying. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Miley. Anybody else that would like to come forward? During public comment? Going once, going twice? All right, I uh, don't see anybody. Uh, this will conclude the second public comment of tonight's meeting. And I believe the, there's one last thing to do is to adjourn to, well, we're scheduled to return July 20th, 2022, or call the chair. Um, I just wanted commissioners to know we're probably gonna look at moving that date up a little bit. I do realize that there are some commissioners that have commitments because they're in leadership roles at NACO and might, will be absent, so we're gonna try to see if we can do it the day before. So look for an email. Um, staff will communicate and we'll try to land on a day where, the, where we make it happen. But until then, we stand adjourned.